Act 3, people! Yes, we are finally here. Act 3 of the remarkably long Pope on Film podcast. But in our defense... Yeah. If you have time during the fan fiction part, you can yeah. look up my fan fictions on AO3. Because okay. I have one where it's... Uh, it's sex between Beetle and Monkey from Kubo and the Two Strings. It's sex Kubo and Beetle. the Two Strings erotic fan fiction. Okay. Yep. Okay. okay. Cool. Thank <laughs> they you. They cry like three times during it because it's emotional. Yeah. Uh, in our defense, this podcast is very long, but we use every second of this podcast. We? Yes, we do. Every every. Yeah, every second of this show is just full with entertainment and knowledge and learning. Not a second is spared. In fact, you know, now that I think about it, it's actually kind of shocking that we have a podcast that is this long and we don't and we don't waste any time no. during it. You know? When you really think about it, it is a long show and we don't waste any time. In fact, you know what? I think it might actually make me feel a little bit better if we waste a bit of time on the show. You know what I mean? We could certainly do that. Like it, yeah, so you know what? Okay, so for the next few minutes, Bunny, let's just make some animal noises. Okay. I don't know what that was, but I, I bet it some sort of animal. Okay. I'm done with it. That was good. Thank that you. was good. <laughs> I don't know. 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 I don't Suffering from performing things. I can do the big fight. Donald Duck? Okay. <laughs> Did you get that's, my Chewbacca? That's Donald Duck masturbating. Uh, hey, that's my destiny, destiny. Uh, animal oh, noises. Don't forget to say it all. You want uh, Swamp, swamp, swamp. <laughs> I used to do. I, I used to. I used to try and trick Eleanor by teaching her wrong animal noises. No, when she was like three months old, five months old, I would teach her that, you know, the cow goes moo and the dog goes woof and the the chickens go. Kikiri koo, kikiri koo, flomp, flomp, flomp. <laughs> So I used to be sure that that's what that's what a, the noise a chicken made. Let's make some other noises. What about car slash vehicle noises? Honk honk honk. Honk honk honk. That's good, Maxwell. That's a boat. That's a boat. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. <laughs> that was a semi. That was a semi truck. That was good. Hold on. You can do a motorboat. That's pretty good, Maxwell. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. What about well, here's 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 a fun one: washers and or dryers. Okay, uh, here's our here's our here's our washer. No, no, no. You know, you're supposed to do it so quiet they can't hear because it's really quiet. Uh, it is really quiet. It is really quiet. Meanwhile, our driver's like, me. Okay, it doesn't make dug that dug noise. Dug 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 Sometimes it gets in that dug it a dug it a mode. If you have like too much that's a in there. Machine, and that's, not, that's a top load. Ours doesn't do that anymore. No, but sometimes the dryer gets into dug it a dug it a mode. Does it though? Yeah. Dug it a dug it a dug it a dug it a dug it a. Wow, you know what? What? This whole thing about making noises, about making animal noises, car vehicle noises, washer and dryers, that was sexy as fuck. Yes, it was. Man, that was just pure sex. Not a dry seat in the house, especially, especially, honey, when you started doing the semi truck. <laughs> I think. There's not a dry seat in the house. 
Yeah. Yeah, we're making the panties so drop. Are you we are. The house is full of women? We are just studs on this podcast, Bunny. You and I, we're basically, Fun. we're basically the Fabios of podcasting. I I agree. I totally agree. Yeah. I can't believe it's not butter. Uh, 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 spray. <laughs> just say it. He couldn't say it all the way. And speaking of sex, this week's movie shouldn't exist. It's the 2000. It's the 2015 erotic romance yawn, Fifty Shades of Grey, or as I like to call it, Fifty Shades of Fuck You. Bunny, why can't we sleep in the same bed? <laughs> I, have, I have no idea. And there was never a good explanation for it, that. And I just want to give a shout out to my sister-in-law, Lauren, who saw all of these Fifty Shades of Grey movies in the theaters. There's three of them. Uh, you asked me to go to see the first one. And so I want to give a shout out to Lauren, because I promised her I would this morning. Shout out to my brother. Yeah! Shout out to my brother. Uh, you don't cousin, have Jaden. Cousin. Cousin Jaden, your cousin Jaden Maxwell. Shout out to my cousin Jaden. Okay, so so there's a shout out to Lauren, and now I, I would what? I would also just like to add, you know, since she did see these all in the movies, Lauren, vibrators aren't that expensive, you know, and you don't have to change yeah. the batteries too often in them. Uh, you really don't need to be watching things. Yeah, yeah. You can, you can if you want. Maxwell, I love you, but maybe you shouldn't be chiming in during our discussion of Fifty Shades of Grey. I'm just saying, maybe. Oh shit, it's my dish night. You shouldn't. And 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 now that I've done the shout out, Bunny, what would be the opposite of a shout out? Whisper in. Uh, the opposite of a shout out. Like a, a quiet, like like a, a like a whisper out. A whisper in. Possibly a whisper it would have in. To, it would have to have some kind of net negative effect. Yeah. Because a shout out is positive. Uh, well, I would like to give the opposite of a shout out to my wife Natasha, who was dragged to go see this film on opening day to see this movie, and yet when I asked her to help me, she refused. <laughs> to help me in fact i asked her if she could t if i could tag her in at the end of our discussion of 50 shades of gray and i still haven't gotten a confirmation on that because she does not want to discuss this film neither do i okay look you already know i can't keep my damn mouth shut yeah okay and i got shit to say about this i went off in my human sexuality class and it was like the third day of our class and I know the motherfuckers were like, this bitch is crazy. What the fuck is she talking about? Yeah. So. Well, I, yeah. I, I, think, right. I think if we, I can avoid it, so I think yeah. we will need an expert opinion. <laughs> and that's yeah. you. Okay, yeah. I got homework, man. <laughs> yeah. I do. I have homework. I got, I got one class left. To <laughs> turn into homework. And then next week's finals, and then I graduate on Friday. Yeah, and congratulations to you. Thank you. Friday, Friday. Yeah. Stop singing that song. Or Stop I'm singing break your neck. Stop singing Friday. The different version. No, no. Stop singing Friday. No. Stop singing no, it's Friday. Mommy. You're a Galindo. You're better than that. On the podcast. Yeah. Fifty Shades of Grey, the movie. This film should not exist at all. Now, let me explain why. The reason why the movie Fifty Shades of Grey should not exist brings us back to a regular reoccurring segment on the show, The Mandela Effect in Music History. Yes. One of my favorite reoccurring segments on the show. So here's here's the uh, here's the Maxwell stop singing songs. 
of copyrighted songs while I'm trying to do the podcast, okay? 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 Okay. So here's here's the here's a summation. Basically, we humans are constantly surrounded by an infinite number of alternate universes where an infinite number of possibilities occur, but we humans in this reality cannot see the infinity that surrounds us constantly because we are locked in our own set of probabilities, our own universe. No one has the kind of access to go to to see the infinity that surrounds us. We're not Rick and Morty. So the theory known as the Mandela Effect states that some people in this universe didn't originate in this universe, and they in fact came here from an alternate universe, and uh, they are universe adjacent. They came from another universe, possibly one where the Berenstain Bears is spelled differently, and one where the popular band Soundgarden did not release a song about spoons that features an honest-to-God spoon solo! Yes. So, Mandela, the Mandela effect in musical history, the segment in our podcast, suggests that the best way to see the Mandela effect in action is via popular music. The greatest rapper alive had a hit song that sampled the musical Annie, and no one patted an eye, Bunny. Yes. It was shocking. So, I honestly insist. No, it's 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 ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. So I honestly and sincerely believe that this week's movie, Fifty Shades of Grey, is once again a prime example of the Mandela effect. Mandela effect in popular motion pictures. Because this movie, and especially the series of books, should not exist. I agree. They should, they should not have been written... They should not be popular. They shouldn't have been turned into a movie that made a ridiculous amount at the box office. Let me try and explain to you why this bizarre series of improbabilities um, should not have happened. <clears throat> so, I've got two words for you, buddy. Okay. Two words. It's going to seem like maybe four words, but it's two words. I've got two words for you, Bunny. All right. Snow, Snow Queen's Ice Dragon. Okay. Those are two I, words. I had that as a Snow trial. Snow Queen's, that's all. What did you say? I'm sorry, you cut out a second there. I said I had that as a child. Let, let me let me walk you through this. Snow Queens, that's all one word. S-N-O-W-Q-U-E-E-N apostrophe S, all one word. That's the first word there, stupidly. So Snow Queens, one word. Ice Dragon, again, one stupid word. In fact, the, in fact, the whole freaking name sounds ridiculously stupid. So stupid that I really want to focus on the idiocy of, of this name. Snow Queens Ice Dragon. Yes. Snow Queen's Ice Dragon. That's the name of a woman with no prior writing experience on fanfiction.net, the website where anyone can write their own fanfiction and upload it for other people to read. In 2008, Snow Queen's Ice Dragon saw the movie Twilight and fell in love with it like so many women back then that are now ashamed of their time being obsessed with Twilight. Yes. I'm not pointing any fingers to anyone in this house. I might be occasionally taking side-eyed glances at someone in the kitchen who I'm not going to say. Look, I enjoyed the books. I was young and I was stupid. And I didn't like the movies because they got so much wrong. Yeah. Fuck yeah. off. Okay. I wasn't mentioning your name. I, I, for all they know, I could have been talking about Eleanor. Just saying. Max. Yeah. So, Snow Queen's Ice Dragon um, bought the Twilight books, l- loved them, then uh, uh, Snow Queen's Ice Dragon, who again had never written anything before, 
is not a writer, has never studied writing, had never taken a class in writing, someone with no prior experience whatsoever. She said, I'm going to start writing erotic fan fiction for Twilight. So she started... She started writing fan fiction. To be fair, no, again, no prior writing experience. My wife is more of a goddamn writer than Snow Queen Ice Dragon. Yes. My my wife has more writing experience than Snow Queen's Ice Dragon. My wife has more act uh, writing ability. My wife is a better writer than Snow Queen's Ice Dragon. And again, this is the first book she's ever written ever in her life. Yeah. Her erotic fan fiction is called Masters of the Universe, and it was so dirty, so ridiculously dirty, so graphically dirty, that it was pulled from fanfiction.net. Okay. So Snow Queen's Ice Dragon said... Yeah, yeah. How... How how dirty and also how bad do you have to be to have your work removed from fanfiction.net? <laughs> so she set up her own website for it and sold it as a Kindle book. And it took off. For some reason, this freaking book took off. It got so popular, in fact, that the actual Twilight people came a-knocking. They, they, they sold so many copies. Eleanor, stop, stop, stop it. Stop spilling your drink. Don't don't spill it. I will take it away Hello? from you. Okay? Don't test me. The Master of the Universe uh, erotic Twilight books became so popular that the actual Twilight people came a-knocking and said, Yeah, no. Shut it down. <laughs> so this... So this inexperienced author got her a NC-17 rated teen vampire smut and said, okay, I'm going to remove the vampirism, I'm going to change the names, the settings, make them older, and yeah, I'm going to call it Fifty Shades of Grey. <laughs> and that is how the book Fifty Shades of Grey came about. This whole series is was literally, originally, dirty Twilight fan fiction. How is this po how did this be then become popular? Why did this become popular? How was this a massive best-selling series of books? The answer is obvious. The Mandela effect. Yes. We live in a bizarre universe where some weird shit is happening. You know? Yes, we do. We're in this bizarre universe where the biggest rapper in America just samples Annie and everybody's okay with that. Where, 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 uh, one half of the band ABBA writes a musical about the game of chess. Yeah. And that musical has a hit song. That's a we, great song. We live in a universe where Donald Trump is freaking president. What the fuck? Where is your fork? And and where some Are you done? woman with no writing experience just quickly taps out some smut for a website and it becomes the one of the best selling books in America. This is not my universe. This yeah, I totally understand. This is not my universe either. Not at all. Yeah. Excuse this me. book, this book should not have been written. It, it makes no sense whatsoever. Absolutely no sense and that I, this stupid thing became popular. And I kind of love the idea that somebody ripped off already mediocre work to make mediocre work. Yeah, it's like when you take a copy of something that's already been copied. Yeah, exactly. It's when you try and photocopy something that's already been photocopied. Mm -hmm. That's 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 Fifty Shades of Grey. It's ridiculous. It's it's fucking weird. So this 
2015 shitty ass movie is based on a shitty ass book series that just gets the shitty ass Twilight books and makes them more unreadable. Yes. That's it in a nutshell. Um, uh -huh. Inexperienced author Dragon Queen's Icy Butt whatever really likes using the phrase holy crap a lot, which just goes to show what what little acting talent she has. Side note, uh, Eleanor, in the beginning of this podcast, was playing who, with a who, toy. Who is raising that, a that barn played music. Was, in the background? Who is well, raising trying, a barn? Yeah, I'm trying to explain it. I'm trying to explain it. Eleanor, in the beginning of this podcast, was playing with a really loud toy that played music and sang. And so I, I, during the first break, I took it away from her and tried to give her something that I thought was quiet. And that's just this giant crayon. And so now she's getting this giant crayon and smashing it on the floor hard while chanting something. I don't know what she's chanting. Probably something satanic. Yeah. I'm going to kill everyone. Satan is good. Satan is our pal. That's she's chanting. You're chanting, Ray. <laughs> that was a burps reference because yes. I'm on another level. This isn't the level. The next level's the level. Oh, not a level. Interesting side note: Twilight author Stephanie Meyer. Is it Meyer or Myers? Meyer. I see it. See it's. I think it's Stephanie Meyer, but I want to say Stephanie Meyer's like Liam Neeson's. So I'm just. You want to say that because it makes more sense. Yeah. So Stephanie Meyer's followed up her teen Mormon vampire series with a book called The Host. Yes. And it's a book about a person who's sharing his mind with an alien, and then they both fall in love with the same human woman. So what I'm saying is, don't be surprised if. The woman falls in love with someone who has two. The the okay, the woman's the one with the host inside of her. Anyway, don't be surprised if Snow Princess Firequeef's next book is called Holy Crap, an Alien Three Way. <laughs> yeah, it's this is my totally new original book. Okay, look. Um, regarding the host, it wasn't terrible. It could have been. Yeah. It could have been better written like well no it could have been edited better i think and i am a sucker for the the two person three way love triangle thing going on mm -hmm. that trope is great if it's done correctly um this one was done decently and with a decent plot to it however i still have yet to watch the movie because how in the fuck are you supposed to do a movie about a three way a two person three way love triangle when one of the people exists in the head and literally more than half of the book happens inside that person's head. Yeah, I don't see how that. But that's... there's no way that, that was done in any coherent manner. Um, It has been done coherently once. The film is called All of Me and it stars uh, Steve Martin and Lily Tomlin and it's yeah. wonderful. Lily Tomlin controls one half of Steve Martin's body. Love that movie. Steve Martin is amazing. So that was a side note. Double side note, Stephanie Myers totally screwed over her fan base with the host. Because yeah. she said, okay, if you all love Twilight, get ready for my exciting new series. It's called The Host. Here's the first book. This is the first of three books. Maybe the first of four books. Maybe the first of five books. Get ready to buy all the books in The Host. Oh, wait, it didn't sell that great? Well, Fuck that series. Here's my new book. It's called The Chemist. And she totally abandoned the host series that she promised. So a bunch of people are like, oh, this book is great. I can't wait for the second one. Oh, you're not writing the second one? Oh, well, fuck you then. <laughs> so she basically screwed over all of the people who were still fans of her. Good. So The Chemist came out. So then so then her, her next book came out, The Chemist, and people were like, Stephanie Meyer, you're still a thing? <laughs> no, you burned me on the host. No, I'm not buying this. So her last book was a big was a big flop. So so yay, yay! I got to give that a yay because um, she shouldn't be writing books at all. Yeah, ever. So to make a long story longer, 
the Fifty Shades of Grey, the book, should never have been written. Then it should never have gotten popular. The popularity of the Fifty Shades of Grey book series makes no sense to me, except Mandela Effect. Um, so it should never have been written. It should never... Eleanor, seriously? What happened? I tried to get her the quietest thing in the world, and she's struggling to to find ways to be loud with a giant crayon. It should never have been written, and then it should never have gone popular. So this badly written Edward Cullen fanfic was published, and it got big. So big, in fact, that studios started fighting over the rights for it. Which in itself is uh, both sad and fucking tragic, really. Yeah. Eventually... Universal Studios buys the rights to it. So, Bunny, so so here's here's the big question for you, okay? Yeah. This summer, Universal Studios presents Fifty Shades: The Ride, a thrill-packed 4D experience. What would that ride be, Bunny? What would Fifty Shades: The Ride be? Uh, well, I'm thinking it's a water slide to begin with. No. Uh, and as you're going through the tube, you are you are whipped as you're going through the tube. tube. But the best part, okay, when you come out of the other end of the tube and you're going to splash into the water, you literally yeah. hover over the water because you're not allowed to touch the water oh, without no. permission. Ah, mm -hmm. I'm I'm down with that. I'm down with that. Hello, I'm Christian Gray. Well, I'm Anastasia Steele. Wow, that sounds ridiculously made up. No one is named Anastasia Steele. Who wrote this shit? That's a horrible fucking name. That's the opening scene. Yeah the opening scene of the movie anyway one of the studios that was fighting for the rights to 50 shades of gray was mark Wahlberg's film studio yeah. and god i wish he would have gotten the rights because then there would have been a chance that he starred in it mm -hmm. it really would have dug that hey how you doing hey how, how's it going buddy my name's going? christian Bur my name's christian gray what's going on bro <laughs> hey 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 do you want me to tie you up Maybe fuck yeah, we can totally do that, bro. I'm serious about this. <laughs> Say hello to your mother for me. Say hello to your mother for me. So, your name's Anastasia. Well, I produced Entourage. <laughs> I would have been down with that. That would have been a better movie is what I'm saying. Yeah. The hey, studio... You know what? what? I, no, I just want to... Uh, I really adore the chick that they got to play her, though. I she's aesthetically pleasing to me. Yes, oh, but no, I really felt that no. like they they hired they hired Dakota Johnson they hired Dakota Johnson to be the female star of this movie, and then she said, "Okay, now let me see if I can out mope Kristen Stewart." Yes, she did. I'm, I'm not talking about. No, no, I'm not talking about you. You misinterpret me. And basically they had like a mope off. You misinterpret me. I'm not talking about her acting in any way possible. I'm just talking about her aesthetic look. Like she's pretty to me. <sighs> and I'm not talking about in the movie. I'm talking about the pictures that I looked up afterwards. Okay. Like she's pretty. Yeah. I like her. Yeah. Visually. I know nothing of her outside of this movie. Um, yeah. I've never seen her in anything else. I know nothing of her character. But, like, I'll look at her and Bye. think, she's Bye. pretty. Bye. So she's got that going for her. Yeah. Eleanor, why do you keep trying to take over my podcast? Because Maxwell does it. Because Maxwell does it. does it. Bella does it. Yeah. segment. Eleanor, you're not getting a segment not on yet. the podcast. She's like, I already got a segment. Yeah. Bye. Hi, Bye. Eleanor. Bye. Oh, yeah. Say hi, Bunny. He can't. He can't see your wave. Say hello. Hello. Hi. They love you. Oh. <laughs> you tried. You kind of tried. You kind of just said woo. <laughs> yeah. Now you're just.
just Ric Flaring it. Say, woo! Woo! Nice. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Give me some dramatic music, Eleanor. Da da da. Da da. That, that, that was good. That was good. Da, da. Yeah. So so the studio. Da, da, da. Thank you. <laughs> the studio originally wanted Ryan Gosling to star da, da. in it, but uh, he said no because he didn't want to be in this piece of shit. But also, I imagine. The studio went to Ryan Gosling and said, we want you to star in Fifty Shades of Grey. And Ryan Gosling said, ooh, you want me to star in a film? Well, <laughs> I have some questions for you then. Question number one. Will there be jazz in this film? It's an important question. Follow-up question. Can I save the jazz? <laughs> That's what I want to do now. I just want to save Jazz from the evil blacks. Oh, oh my god. And that's how we got La La Land. That is how we got La La Land, and I'm I'm still angry with him about that. The thing it Yeah. So 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 there's a lot that I hate about this movie. It's badly written. It's way too long. Fifty Shades of Grey does not need to be over two hours long oh, for shit's sake. God no. This, is, this is this isn't Fifty Shades Infinity War. Okay? Yeah. Jesus Christ, you need to calm your ass down. <laughs> Fuck. And of course, uh there's the the mope off. Uh huh. And also, and also, one thing that I hate about this film is the fact that Christian Grey is essentially Batman. Yeah. You oh you like you like to be a dominant and tie women up. Why do you like doing that? Because something bad happened to me when I was six years old, is that how it and I've never gotten over it. It's like oh. shit. You and you and fucking Bruce Wayne. You know what? Uh, instead of tying women up in a pleasure dungeon. Here's here's an idea. Why don't you just take some uh, pills and uh, have a hot bath? Yeah. What's what's she? Like you just need to calm your ass down. Just go go to therapy for shit's sake. Yes, this was a scene in the movie that you saw in theaters. Uh, okay. Oh, wait, what is it like? His 15, mom was right? like a drug addict or something, and so. Yeah, and his dad beat his mom, and then his mom's friend Get like, out. made him a sub and introduced him to it. Okay, so now it's slowly coming back to me because I, yeah, I think out. some of that is from the second movie. Oh, really? Yeah, but most of it is like the mom was a drug addict, the dad like left him, and, yeah. and, and yes, his tortured past. It was bullshit. His tortured past, he was. He was hit, and now he's like taking his anger out on women because he sucks. Shit, this adds an entire new layer to my rant. Yeah, it's fucking Fucking ridiculous. It's the idea of like, oh, hey, if you're into bondage, that's because something bad happened to you. (sighs) Yeah, yeah, that's that's fucked up and stupid. Yeah, not only that, but man, and you know, a lot of people think like that. Yep, because. We were talking about rape and shit like that in our human sexuality course. Stop it. And then I was like, oh, so we're going to be just, we're going to be skipping this chapter. And it was all about like, take that from her. It was all about, you know, like voyeurism and, and BDSM and all that shit. And I was like, we're skipping this? But I have yeah. so much to say about it. And she yeah. was like, yeah, well, I mean, the stuff that we just discussed probably lends a lot to that. And I'm like, you're a fucking college professor. You have a degree in psychology. How the fuck are you going to say something like that? Yeah, because what did, what that's did she not say? necessarily true. People, who, huh? What did she say? What was that? What did she, she say? She basically implied that that like sexual assault and stuff like that leads to or a, is is a product of like. People who are into BDSM, voyeurism, masochism, shit like that. She was she was 
she didn't say it outright, but that was what she was implying to me. And I'm well, like, I, I would, I would that's, go that's, with what you have already taught me through the course of these shows is that just because you have a kink does not necessarily mean that you are going to act on that. That's also true. But I mean, and BDSM, just because... <laughs> yeah, just because you have a kink doesn't mean you're going to act on it. Like me, my biggest sexual fantasy is to have sex with a dead whale, but you don't see me going to SeaWorld with some dynamite. Okay, uh, stop. Then why aren't you allowed at SeaWorld anymore? Explain that. Why are you not allowed yeah. at SeaWorld anymore, Steve? Huh? Huh? Do you want to explain that? Go ahead. Keep going. I'm just... I, I, I gotta... I'm... Yeah, well, it, okay, so, so... Natasha will be back later. Okay. Um, I, you, can, you can tell... I don't no. know as much about this movie as I thought I did because I thought yeah. after a lot of it, I yeah. was dragged to something I didn't want to see in the first yeah. place. Everybody kept telling me, oh, you should read the yeah. books, Natasha. You'll like them. And I'm like, no, I won't. I know I won't like these books, but I'm not going to fucking read them. And then I saw this movie, and I was like, are you fucking kidding me? The entire time, I was just like, no, that's not how. Oh, my fucking God. Are you serious? And Lauren's like, shut up, Natasha. Just enjoy the movie. I was like, how am I supposed to enjoy this piece of shit? It's funny because... Because uh, she forced you, you to like see Fifty Natasha. Shades of Grey the same way you forced me to see Twilight. It's the circle of life is what is what it is. You don't have to. I didn't force you into shit. Okay. No, no, exactly. So. I had to win. They okay. were willing participants. Okay. So this movie is shit. But again, it should never have been made. And this is why. This book is crap. Really crap real crap badly written piece of shit but it's popular and so suddenly sony and warner brothers and universal are fighting for the rights universal wins and this is what they did and this is dangerous this is dangerous they get this shitty shitty piece of shit and they polish it and they shine it up real good and by the time they release the film it looks great <laughs> the set design looks good, color design, the costuming, the soundtrack is great, and that's the problem. Yeah. You don't get Mein Kampf and turn it into a movie with a shirtless Chris Helmsworth and a sweaty Chris Pratt, because then people would be like, oh, hey, that movie looks good. Maybe we should check out this whole Mein Kampf thing. Yeah. I like the analogy. I, I, but I love it because a good movie can legitimize a bad fucking book. Because okay, this is a bad, this is a horrible book. But suddenly you're putting fifty million dollars into a nice, good-looking movie, and that legitimized this shitty book that should never have been written. Yeah. Okay. I thought it was a pretty shitty-looking movie. Too. You know. This movie is shitty looking. Yeah, I didn't think it was all that great. Book. No. Okay, I was not impressed. I don't think they can hear you. Especially with Eleanor moving tables around. What I'm saying is that you're saying, okay, if you put glitz and glamour behind it because it's a fucking $50 million movie and it looks good, even though it's a shitty book, it legitimizes the book. Which would, therefore, you would think, legitimize the message in the book. So using Mein Kampf as an example might sound good in theory, but like there's a difference between Hitler writing Mein Kampf and wanting to wipe the world of every Jew in existence and a bad BDSM practice, which doesn't hurt people if it's cons uh, consensual and sane. I'm just, I was just trying to think of a funny analogy. I'm sorry. I don't mean to ruin it with. It's the, okay. I, I dare touch analogy, you about please. this fucking movie and book. Gotcha. It's, it's just that this movie makes a, a series of shitty books look respectable and serious and a work of a professional. Yes. And not the work of a. And not the work of a talentless hack who got remarkably lucky. This first film made five hundred and seventy-one million dollars at the fucking box office. That's it made over upsetting. half a billion dollars, and it only cost forty million to make. This you film know was why? a ridiculous fucking hit. You want to know why? Because there are why? a lot of horny 
women out there. That's why. Yeah, you know, and it was, and it was like, um, uh, how should I put this? Like, it's like respectable porn, acceptable porn. Yeah, even though it was soft porn. It's still. Yeah, I had a problem when I worked at the bookstore. I, I had a problem when I worked at the bookstore because there would be women who I would work with and they'd be like, oh, my God, book five came out. Book five came out of the Twisted of the Twisted Affair series. I'm so excited. I'm so excited that this book came out. And then later I'm shelving books in the romance section and I go, oh, hey, it's the Twisted Affair series. Let me flip through this. Oh, my God, this is graphic. This is insanely <laughs> graphic. You know yeah. what this is? This is fucking porn. It is. It's porn with words. And yeah. it's upsetting yeah. to me that this is porn written out, and that's socially acceptable. Exactly. It's, so it's socially acceptable for someone that I work with to get excited and go, oh, my God, my porn is in. I'm so excited. Uh -huh. My porn is in. My, I can't do that. My co-teacher read the can, Fifty Shades of Grey. In the staff lounge on her work break at a preschool. How about that? You, hold on. You, you were cutting out. What did you say, Jeannie? We yeah, my, co, my co-worker, a co-worker, was reading the Fifty Shades of Grey series on her break in the staff room at a preschool. Wow. And, yeah, that's ridiculous. Uh-huh. And excited about it and going, yeah. Well, Ooh, mean, she couldn't wait to have her, her break so she could go read it. Really? Okay, I used to read Harlequin romances. Yeah. Not the same thing. Yeah. For a while, well, I was getting uh, was. stripped it's copies of a uh, romance series for Natasha, and they were professional wrestling romance novels. Oh, they were so good. And it was like, it was like, okay, why were heart, they good? The and and shit like that. Oh God. Yeah. Yeah, it was. It was. It was so fun to read those, though. A submission match of love. Oh. <laughs> and shit like that. This a steel cage around my heart. Like really ridiculous shit. And then they stopped making them, and I got really upset. But then I got excited, and I'm like, "Honey, remember those? Uh, remember those uh, uh, professional wrestling romance novels? Now hear me out, Harlequin." Has teamed up with NASCAR, I read and Natasha's it. like, Natasha's like, no, no, no. Well, maybe one or two. <laughs> <laughs> and, and yeah, NASCAR romance novels. I read them, and I mean, they weren't that bad for trashy romance novels. And I learned a lot of things about NASCAR. <laughs> Like, yeah, and then really, this is okay, but thing? I, yeah, and then I don't want to know the, things about NASCAR. And then NASCAR. the woman who wrote the professional wrestling romance series would like go to indie wrestling matches and learn the ins and outs and shit she would learn oh, yeah, all the there was lingo a lot and of shit in those books that like a normal person who doesn't watch wrestling would never know yeah but I, I mean i've been immersed in wrestling because of steve and my fucking my grandpa took me to wrestling matches and shit so i know some of it but like this woman got into some of shit that's like nobody who's picking up those books and doesn't watch wrestling wouldn't understand yeah She's talking about kayfabes and marks and yeah. and shit like that, and it's like, oh wow, no, you you did your you yeah, did so your I, homework. I, I appreciated that because I was like, ah, oh, because she was talking about breaking kayfabe, and I'm like, ha, you fucking know, good good on you, yeah, good on you, yeah. I taught. Why did I close that? And door? just to be clear, I have already gone on and on about this fucking Fifty Shades of Grey movie yes. a lot longer than I thought I would, and I haven't even gotten to the fucking bondage. And and longer than it deserves, frankly. Yeah, yeah, no, way longer than this film deserves. Now, I'm not, I'm not the best person in the world. To talk about BDSM, and I'm gonna have a slight aside here. I was gonna have true story time and talk about something that happened once, but do you think I should not talk about that something that happened I once? I don't know. Or? It depends on what you were gonna talk about. It was like 
Oh. I mean, that's up to you. That's it's that's okay. pretty pretty like behind the scenes personal shit though. Yeah, but also it's like my podcast and at the end of the Fifty Shades of Grey episode, and I'm not sure if it's. I mean, we're big in Japan. A lot of Japanese people will know about this, and I'm yeah. I'm fine with that. Konnichiwa for everybody listening. What? Nothing. Trying to be trying to be nice to I'm huge. This podcast is okay, huge in okay. Japan. Yes, we are huge in Japan. I mean, that's it's your call, but I mean, I do appreciate you actually asking me for once about am. something that involves me. A long time ago, when Natasha and I were just starting out and and dating, yeah. uh, Natasha is a bit more liberal, knowledgeable, liberal. Yeah. And I'm more of a straight-laced conservative. So <laughs> so when we first started dating, uh, we decided to have a night of bondage experimentation. Yes. Which, uh, so she had ropes and straps and all, all of the props. And I'd say about 20 minutes in, I was in tears. I am not about this. Yeah. Yeah. Apparently, it's something it, – I was triggered. And uh, this was pre-robbery. But even pre-robbery, apparently, you shouldn't tie me down and blindfold me. I don't um, know what has happened in my life. But what are you repressing, Steve? I don't know what I'm repressing. There was one time where my dad taught me how to uh, sunbathe, but I don't remember all of it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but whatever happened to me, and also just my parents are assholes. But uh, pretty sure one time they okay. So so yeah. So I'm not the right person to talk about what's wrong with this this movie's skewed version of bondage. Yeah. So tag, what? I just tag Natasha in. Natasha, I'm, take it home. I'm sorry. What? What's wrong with this movie's version of bondage and discipline and dominant and submissive? And I know that their version of this is totally effing wrong, but I can't talk about the specifics. Jeez. So much is wrong with this. There's just so much wrong. I mean, BDSM practices, it's safe, sane, and consensual. I have a hard time seeing all three of those uh, active in this particular film because I never read the books. I did watch a YouTube video, though, of gay men reading Fifty Shades of Grey, and that was hilarious. I really <laughs> highly recommend finding that and watching it um first of all this movie is basically like okay we're going to use this cover of a dominant domination submission relationship to cover up the fact that it is so so abusive such an abusive relationship he is got power issues and a lot in the most face of a lot of people in bdsm do have power issues but it's a matter about how you go about it. I mean, this motherfucker's stalking her for shit's sake. I do remember a part in the film where it was like, he bought her a car or something yeah. without even talking to her about it. And then sold her old car. And so, yeah, sold her old car. Like, like what the fuck? That's, that is, you're trying to take control of her life and do things without even consulting her. That is not consensual in any way, shape, or form. Yeah. And if you're going to have a, a domination submission relationship, if it's going to be in the bedroom, keep it in the bedroom, unless otherwise agreed upon. You don't mm -hmm. take control of some. And sure, there are relationships that are 24-7, live in, like dom-sub. But that's those are, like, super extreme and very rare. So just and the whole contract thing that happened right in the movie yeah. that yeah. yeah okay we're not imagining that I, it's been a long time and I kind of zoned yeah. out through a lot of it um, I saw it twice for shit's sake that contract thing like that obviously that's not a that's not a thing that doesn't happen it does, I mean it does but again that's more along the lines of really hardcore lifestyle twenty four seven type relationships yeah. power dynamics and there's 
I don't like the fact that they give him so much control because in a true uh, dom-sub relationship, it's the submissive that has the majority of the control because what they say goes. Yeah. If they don't agree to something, the dominant won't do it. That's part of the sane and consensual part. You don't cross those lines. Everybody has their limits. And, like, you take a virgin, apparently she's a virgin, like, how many fucking genres and uh, tropes are you trying to fit in this thing? Yeah. Um, but you take you take a virgin and you don't educate her at all on any of this stuff and you just jump into it. It's That's not sane. That's not safe. Just even if it is consensual, which on, I, just, I just don't really feel like it was. I, she felt I felt like she was obsessed the, yeah. with him just a little bit like that. That like, oh, my God, he's so hot. And he was he's a man in a powerful position. And she is not a woman in a powerful position. So they're already starting off uneven. He's taking so advantage, he's taking of, her. advantage of his position above her, literally and figuratively. And he's he's coercing her basically into this. Yeah. He doesn't tell her anything about this. He's using his past abuse to abuse, continue the abuse cycle by abusing somebody else and making it seem like it's her choice. I and, and the would real agree. problem with this movie is the real problem with this movie is that this movie and book, this whole series, was super popular with. Uh, repressed housewives and stay-at-home moms and 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 women who had no knowledge of the bondage lifestyle who are reading this book and then going, oh, this is what bondage is. But it, but this isn't bondage. This is just an abusive relationship and a creepy and that's, guy. And that's the problem with it too is that it's it's very it's a very abusive and and power imbalanced relationship. A lot of women who have no prior knowledge they're reading this they're watching this movie they're getting off on it which you know what it's fine but educate yourself they're not going and educating themselves and they're getting themselves into these situations where they're honestly going to get hurt and i remember hearing reports about how yeah bdsm has become mainstream and so now you can do this and you can try at home and blah blah, blah. but also i heard reports about how there were more women and men who were harmed yeah no. like in no. a relationship like this, no. if you're into pain, you can no. hurt somebody. That's why no. I'm going to hurt you no, in a no. good way. I'm not going to harm you. There's yeah. a difference between hurting somebody and harming somebody. And because these people have no prior knowledge to this community at all, and they don't bother educating themselves, they get a harm. They can get seriously harmed. Yeah. In right ways that not only can sometimes cause death or, you know, things that cannot be taken back irreparable damage yeah, yeah but that's psychological damage as well because there's so much psychological aspect to domination and submission it's not just oh let's get kink in the bedroom and try handcuffs that's that's pretty fucking vanilla mm -hmm. you know everybody's tried a little bit of bondage like oh let me hold your wrists while i fuck you from behind some shit you know yeah that's pretty vanilla, but that's the extent of their kink knowledge. So when you get into whips and you get into flogging and you get into some serious type bondage, collars and like playing around like that, it's just educate yourself. You have to educate yourself. And the author clearly only knew what she had read from her, uh, from fan fiction before. Yeah. I write and read fan fiction. I can spot somebody who's never been in lifestyle from a mile away. And I'm like, I can't read this. It's shit. But people who are knowledgeable, they write it well. They make sure to add, look, you know, they, she, she tried to say, oh, no, look, I'm being safe, sane, and consensual. I'm going to have them sign a contract. Yeah. That's not how it works. Yep. There, yeah, there is usually always supposed to be some sort of negotiation. You're supposed to find out what you like, what you don't like, what lines you want to push, what lines you don't want to push or cross at all. You know, what you really like, what really gets you going mm -hmm. and then go from there. But you don't just sign a fucking contract right off the bat. Like, this is how it's going to be. Yeah. And also, like, I know she's a virgin, but. What's a butt plug? Oh, oh stop my it. God! The fucking butt plug! Okay, okay, okay. Fucking stop it! She right? was fine with genital clamps. 
She read the words genital clamps. She understood what they meant. She may not have seen genital clamps before, but she was able to look at genital clamps and say, you know what? I don't want any part of that. And then she's like, butt plugs? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Why are you not able to employ the same reasoning power that you were just able to use on genital clamps for butt plugs? Oh, yeah. AR-15s. I love AR-15s. AR-15s are great, but i got a question. What's a gun? Yeah. I mean, I just... Now, what I always... What I always wonder about when I watch something like this uh, and would like to break down and Google it one day, I don't know when, but I, whenever I see something like this, anything with bondage or anything like that, this really seems like it should be an evangelical Christian kind of a kink. I you know? Mean... Because... the. the now I know it doesn't always have to be that way, but the man is over the woman and the man dominates the woman and the woman is subservient to that man. It's got evangelical Christian written all over it. Well, I mean, sure. If that's the dynamic, but it's not always that way. No. I mean, there right, are right, understood. Also, yeah. You know, I mean, there's a lot of dominant women out there and it's not always. Uh, how am I, what, am I, what am I trying to say? I mean, you're not wrong. There's, there's, and that's, I think, a lot of the draw for some potentially abusive dominant males out there. And that's another aspect of this. Like, men are like, oh, God, a Fifty Shades of Grey, whatever. And then they go, they're forced to go and watch it with their significant others or whatever. Yeah. And then they, they got this thing in their mind and they're like, oh, well, if this is what she likes. And then they start abusing their woman and their woman thinks it's hot because, oh, yes, yeah, so, you know, this is like Fifty Shades of Grey. And then, boom, you're an abusive relationship. Yep. yep. And you think it's completely acceptable because you have no prior knowledge to how shit yeah. should be working. You have no frame of reference. So, yeah, in that matter, you're right. It yeah, absolutely is like an, ev- an evangelical Christian kink because yeah. they could they could totally get off on that. And they probably do. Like uh, the Kansas what is it, mayor, governor, whatever it was. Yes. Mm. Kansas. He straight tied her up blindfolded her and took pictures of her against her will. And anyways, um. She probably watched Fifty Shades too. He probably watched Fifty Shades. Anyway, um, but I mean, there's so many dynamics that you can that you can have. Yeah. And I just I never read the books, so I can't really speak on the books themselves. But Lauren did try to push them on me. She was like, "I've got yeah, them on my did. Kindle. I can I can let you or my Nook. I can I can share them with you, and you can read them." I was like, "I have absolutely 100 percent no interest in that whatsoever, Lauren." Yeah. And she was like, "No, they're really good." I said, "I doubt that." <laughs> yep. I said, "I highly doubt that." And then when the movie came out, she was like, "Okay, well, we're gonna go see a movie for my birthday, okay?" And I was like, "All right, fine, whatever." We're gonna go watch Fifty Shades of Grey. I already bought the tickets, and you're forced to go. I was like, "Your birthday's not in February." <laughs> oh well, yeah. So I was forced to watch this movie, and it's like the whole time I'm just flabbergasted because I know how the shit works clearly. And the thing that pisses me off, oh, this is what pisses me off. Okay, I don't care that this woman wrote Twilight fan fiction that got popular. I don't care that this woman never wrote a goddamn thing in her life. I really don't. I mean, good on her. She yeah. she she wrote she something. She wrote something. People liked it because they didn't. You know, there's a difference between liking something in fan fiction and liking something in real the real world. And, and there's a huge debate about how, you know, people think, oh, you shouldn't have this stuff in fan fiction because of real life. But it's like, you know what, if you can't differentiate between fan fiction and real life, then maybe you should go get help. Yeah. Um, and if you, I'm just saying, like, yeah. if there's certain things that you're like, oh, my God, that can really happen. No, because this is fake. Yeah. <laughs> you don't look at a sci-fi fic and be like, oh my god, that's real? It's fucking fiction. It's yeah. not it's not called faction. Yeah. That's, yeah. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> is it science fiction or is it science faction? Yeah. I can't Satisfied? get no science faction. <laughs> but it it's just I'm really proud of, you know, anybody who can come from like that and succeed in this manner. However, it's not all specifically on her. Yeah, she should have educated herself on on these manners 
But she never knew she her shit was going to get that popular. She didn't know somebody was going to approach her and say, I want to buy the rights to this. And we're going to, you know, we, we're going to publish it as book. She didn't know she was going to have this level of success. Yeah. Okay. There are plenty of fan fiction stories out there who have absolutely no research behind them at all. And, and that's fine. But when you get to the level where you're being published on a high level by a big name publisher, you should have your editors do their fucking job. Yeah. If you're read this, you're going to edit it. You're going to need to do your own research and make sure it's being written in, in, well. Like you can't just from what I heard the, the the gay guys on the YouTube video saying, how in the hell did that even pass muster for yeah. an editor? Yeah. I don't get it. So you should clean it up, fix it up, make her rewrite it a few times until you polish it nicely. Make sure that it's halfway decent. Yeah. And, I also, and if you're going to make a movie out of it, you've got so many other people. This has to pass through before this movie's finished and filmed. Yeah. And you could fix shit in during the movie part portion of it if you wanted to as well. Like there's so many layers to this. It's not just all on the writer at this point. So like, yeah, dude, it may not have been that great fan fiction, but you put yourself out there and then you had a shit ton of other people get their hands on it and they didn't say anything. They didn't try to fix it. They didn't try to make you fix it. Like, so it's not all on her. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's on it. Yeah. It takes a village to fuck this up. It really does. I mean, like to this amount of, Hey, knock it out. This amount of fuck up, it takes a lot of people to fuck it up this badly. Yeah. Weird, interesting fact about this movie. When they were in pre-production for Fifty Shades of Grey, for whatever reason, author Brett Easton Ellis, the man who wrote the novel Less Than Zero and the novel American Psycho, said, oh my God, you're making a Fifty Shades of Grey movie? Can I write the screenplay? That would be fucking awesome. <laughs> and they said, no, we're going to find somebody else. And I, w- and I got to say, the man who came up with the idea for American Psycho, I would have loved to have seen his version of Fifty Shades of Grey. It might have been yeah. actually pretty damn good. Because that dude knows his shit. He's a huge fucking author. He's written a bajillion books. Less Than Zero is amazing. Fucking American Psycho. Yeah. The guy who came up with Patrick Bateman wanted to write this fucking movie. I have three hours to get home. Okay. Done. I love you, honey. Thank you for helping me out. Thank you for bringing this shit home. Fuck this movie is what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. To, to summarize, this movie. The thing that pisses me off the most two hours and eight minutes for this piece of shit? Yeah. What the hell? Eleanor, do you want to watch Fifty Shades of Grey? Oh, she's crying. She's crying because she doesn't want to. She's crying because she doesn't want to see Fifty Shades of Grey. That's that's the proper response. That's the proper response. Uh, so fuck this movie. That's and that's all I have for this movie. It's more than it deserves. I can't think of anything else that could possibly be said about this movie. Uh, uh, well, well. Uh, Unlike Natasha, I did not find her very attractive, very attractive at all. And the bones, the bones on that lady. Oh, it was. Oh God. Was it a lady? Because she had no boobs. She had no boobs. I, I, I don't. She had no. Yeah, I don't think we do. She She was. She was. She was a. I really saw her. Yeah, she looked very malignant. Ashley. She what? She looked very much like porn actress Melissa Ashley. Ah. No boobs. No boobs. Yeah. She looked like she could have been like 16. It, well, it was, it was kind of like, weird. you know, if you want to be fucking a boy, go get a boy. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Fucking, fucking ancient Rome, this shit. <laughs> so I think that's all I have. It, it's also it's also important to note that in the beginning of the second book in the Twilight series, Edward Edward and Bella break up. 
and Bella ends up with another person, the 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 werewolf really? Jacob. Okay. So this book, Fifty Shades of Grey. How many Twilight books are there? Four or five? Four? Something like that. I think. Four, five, maybe four. Way more than this should be. I think there's four Twilight books. Yeah, there's four Twilight books, but there's only three Fifty Shades of Grey books. So this Fifty Shades of Grey book encompasses all of the first Twilight book and the beginning of the second Twilight book. Because at the end of this film, uh, fucking Anastasia and Christian are no longer together, and that's like the first 60 pages of the second Twilight book. Yeah. So, so yeah, you're getting like a Twilight and a half in Fifty Shades of Grey. I just wanted to point that out. Twilight was huge for the bookstore business that I am no longer in. And on that positive note, that is it for this week. I, I swear that's it this time. Next week... See, I picked Fifty Shades of Grey because occasionally I want to pick something that's so huge that will trick people who never listen to this podcast into listening to it. Yeah. That's why I picked Fifty Shades of Grey. That, that, uh, 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 by picking a huge popular movie, we're going we're gonna to trick more listeners into listening to this shit. And that's why I picked Fifty Shades of Grey. So, so uh, uh, basically... I'm SNL musical guesting it. Uh Uh-huh, okay. The way I always used to hear it is, sometimes we would want to get these indie bands in to do these cool indie bands that people don't know. But in order to get a cool indie band, we need one Katy Perry. (laughs) So one week, we get a Katy Perry, and once that happens, then we can get the indie band we want. And then after that, we get Pink. And then Pink is huge. And then after that, we can get another indie band. And then after that, Madonna. So now that we've done Fifty Shades of Grey and it's fucking done and we're over, next week we're we're going to be watching a bizarre 2017 experimental ghost drama. Okay. It's really fucking weird. It's from last year, and it's simply titled A Ghost Story. A Ghost Story from last year. Yeah, if you haven't heard of it, that's great. Don't look it up. Don't IMDb it. Don't Wikipedia it. Don't just go into it blind. Get ready for some exciting pie eating action. When you're watching this film, you might say, What the fuck is up? What is wrong with the. No, it's not letterboxed. It's square boxed. Yeah. This is a square boxed film. This is really bizarre. And I read so many reviews of this film. And, and it's. This is what's going to happen. You're either going to fall in love with this amazing drama and its scope and the story it's trying to tell, this beautiful art film. You're going to either be blown away by it or you're going to watch the worst film you've ever seen. <laughs> the critics were, were split 50-50 about this. Yeah. This is either the greatest or the worst film I've ever seen. Sometimes it's both. But I, either way, get ready for some exciting pie-eating action. Okay. Pie-eating action. Cool. Yeah, it's already it's already on the cough cough, so it's already there waiting for you. But that's next week. Next week, we are watching the 2017 bizarre experimental ghost drama, A Ghost Story. Also next week, we're going to be talking about uh, an exciting Thor spinoff that I've come up with. Yeah. Uh, we've got another uh, person, place, or thing we're going to be shitting on. We've got a legal warning in the beginning of the show. We're going to be watching the 1970 film Equinox. It's a really crappy, bizarre, weird film, but also it has a Criterion edition. <laughs> <laughs> Just to show you how much some people love this film. Yeah. There's a criterion for Equinox. People 
some people love this film and it's like, oh, this is ahead of its time. And allegedly, like, the Evil Dead was based a lot on this film. But also, it's shit. Uh, yes, it's shit. It's shit with some really big names. Yeah. Not acting, yeah. but behind the yeah. scenes. Yeah. So that's next week. Big Got fucking names. Thing. Yeah, yeah, got got an exciting next week plan. But now that I'm looking back at this episode, I gotta say, uh, all things considered, is a show on NPR. All things, all things considered? considered, yeah, yeah, Audie Cornish. Uh, that's that's uh, it's a good show, and I learn a lot about politics. But uh, when it's donation drive time, I turn the radio off. <laughs> As all good Americans should. And also, all things considered, I gotta say, I think this has been a pretty good episode. Pretty I good. think this has been a damn good episode. It has been a damn good episode. Yes, Thank you. Is. I was waiting. I was waiting for that. I th- I agree. I concur. So, until next week, I am Bunny Williams. And I am Reverend Steve, and for, oh goodness, for Bella and Maxwell and Eleanor and and Natasha and Destiny and Deanna and everybody else, I just want to say thanks for listening, and we will see you next week, you godless heathens. And you douche waffles and poopy toots. Bella, what did you think about Fifty Shades of Grey? Oh, it was it was Eddie. bad. Shut up! You didn't see Fifty Shades of Grey. It and you bad from what I thought. Yeah. Okay. You Thank you. Thank you. And you waffles? Is that what yeah. Maxwell said? Ran in I've to get his two cents in. Do 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 do